Oma jnana timarandasya kyananjana shalakaya chaksurun militanyena tasmai shri Recording in progress. Nama om Vishnu padaya Krishna prishtaya bhutale Srimati bhakti vedanta swaminiti namine Namaste Sarasati Devi Koravani Pracharine Nirvisesha Sunyavadi Paschacha Deshatarine Vancha Kaupa Terabhyascha Kripa Sindhu Bhai Evacha Patitanam Pavanebhyo Vaishnavibhyo Namo Namaha Jai Shri Krishna Chaitanya Prabhu Nityananda Shri Hatvaita Gadadhar Shri Vasadi Gaur Bhakta Vinda Hare Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare 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 Dham Welcome everyone to our study of Nectar of Devotion and this is lesson number 10. We still have two more lessons to go next week. And uh, I also looked over the questions for the open book. You can do the two which were on, the, on that slideshow, question one and question seven. All right, for the open book. Okay, Maharaj. Okay, so we'll go into the class. Recognize this place? Shobhamai Keshavi Mataji. No, Maharaj. You don't recognize this place? I don't want to just guess. <laughs> mm -hmm. This is Radhakund. Okay, I thought as much, Maharaj. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah, we're going to hear about Radhakund today, maybe. Oh, Angas of, ba Angas of Bhakti, okay. We did this already, right? We talked about 64 Angas and how we're going to improve. Okay, lesson 10. We're going into Raga Nuga Bhakti. You never heard of this before? Right? Raga Nuga Bhakti. We did Bhava, Sadhana Bhakti, Bhava Bhakti, Prima Bhakti. We did, uh, oh, we, oh, we did do Raga Nuga. We did, we heard about Vaidhi Bhakti. And Vaidhi Bhakti, higher than Vaidhi Bhakti, is Raga Nuga Bhakti. Right? Spontaneous devotion. So it's described for us in chapters 15 and 16. We're going into these two chapters, about 15 and 16, to hear about Raga Nuga Bhakti. Jai Sagoswami Prabhu Ki Jai. Role play, pair exercise. One partner is meditating on starting the practice of Raganuga Bhakti due to his perception that he has come to the appropriate platform based upon his understanding of the required qualifications. He thus seeks confirmation from an advanced devotee before beginning. 
His partner, acting as a senior devotee, will mentor him. They will discuss several topics, including anartha nivriti, intensity of greed, sadhana, importance of continuing to offer substantial service to Prabhupada's mission, etc. Prepare a 10 to 15 minute role play for next Tuesday, our last class. This should be Tuesday. We have to change this. Right? Who, who, I think we'll, 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 we'll give this service to certain devotees. It would be good for some people to do this, make a little drama. Right, Surashan? Prabhu, you could do one. And you could do it with Sashi Khan. I think, okay. I think the two of you could do it. Work out something. One of you has to be the Raganuga Bhakti, Bhakta, one, and the other has to be the mentor. Okay. And, and we'll hear from the ladies. Shubhamai, Keshavi Mataji. I think you could do it with, along with, uh, Sat, uh, along with, who would be good to do it with? Sa, um, Sa, Sanjya Mataji. Sure, Maharaj. She's not here right now, but I can. Yeah, yeah, okay. Yeah, Sandhya Mataji will be joining in 15 minutes. She is late. She messaged me. Okay, okay. So it would be nice, I think, if the two of you could do that for hear from one, one ladies' group and one men's group. We could see this and we'll discuss after. But anyway, that's, that's not for today. This will be for. Two, on Tuesday, next week. Okay, so we're going into Ragat Mika Bhakti. We changed it, right? We, remember before, it's Raganuga Bhakti. This is Raganuga Bhakti, but now we're going to talk about Ragat Mika Bhakti. It's a little different. We will hear what is the difference. Oh, these words, right? the desired object of life, appropriate for one's own original aptitude of love, spontaneous, swarasiki, and then raga, attachment. So, iste swarasiki raga, parama vishtata bhavet, absorption in the service of the Lord. Tanmaya Bhavet Bhakti Satra Ragat Mikod Ita Ragat Mikod Ita All right, let's have the translation. When one becomes attached to the Supreme Personality of Godhead, his natural inclination to love is fully absorbed in thoughts of the Lord. That is called transcendental attachment, raga, and devotional service according to that attachment is called ragatmika or spontaneous devotional service. So, let's read that again. When one becomes attached to the Supreme Personality of Godhead, his natural inclination to love is fully absorbed in thoughts of the Lord. That is called transcendental attachment, raga. And devotional service according to that attachment is called ragatmika or spontaneous devotional service. Raga is total absorption in one's most worshipable object, tempered with emotions that are swarasika, swarasiki, that is, in accordance with one's 
innate mood of transcendental love. When devotion to Sri Krishna is fully complemented by raga, it is described as ragatmika bhakti. So this is quite difficult to absorb. Raga is total absorption in one's most worshipable object, tempered with emotions that are swarasiki in accordance with one's innate mood of transcendental love. When devotion to Sri Krishna is fully complemented by Raga, it is described as Ragat Mika Bhakti. All right, so this is Ragat Mika Bhakti described. Raga, spontaneous emotion, more effectively allows us to absorb our minds in Krishna than we can absorb them with regulated practice. Kamsa's fear and Sishupal's envy made them obsessed in thought of Krishna. So spontaneous emotion, if we have that spontaneous emotion, it's easier for us, it's more effective to absorb our minds in Krishna than if we were just following the rules and regulations. When we follow the rules and regulations, we don't develop so much emotion for Krishna. We don't become so absorbed in Krishna. We're often thinking of the rule and regulation, oh I have to do this, oh I have to do that. We're not thinking of Krishna. But spontaneous emotion, is, it's easier to absorb our mind in Krishna. And the examples are given to demons, Kamsa and Sishupal. So Kamsa was always thinking, he was always thinking, Krishna is going to come to kill me. Because from the time of Devaki's marriage, at that time he heard the omen that the eighth child of your sister will kill you. So Kamsa was always worried that this person is going to come to kill me. So Kamsa had fear of that. And Sishupala, his problem was envy. He was always envious of Krishna because Krishna was always more than him. Krishna had more money than him. Krishna had a little more strength than him. Krishna was a little better looking than him. Krishna had everything more than him. So he was always envious of Krishna. So he was thinking of Krishna, but thinking in envy. So this, this Raga, this, this is described, taken here from the Srimad Bhagavatam, 7th canto, 1st chapter, 31st verse. Narada describes six modes of spontaneous attachment. There are six different ways in which we can have that spontaneous attachment. Narada Muni describes them in this verse, in the Srimad Bhagavatam. One way is the lusty desire in the gopis. Yeah, we know the gopis always had lusty desire for Krishna. Of course, their lust is very pure, transcendental. But they have that lust and, and it's spontaneous attachment. They're always attached to Krishna. And the other example, another example, number two, fear. Kamsas had fear for Krishna. And number three, we spoke about also Sishupala and his envy of Krishna. Then number four, the kinship in the Vrishnis or Yadavas. They, they were all kins, right? They were all one family, the Vrishnis or the Yadavas. They were all one family. So they had a lot of devotion for Lord Krishna. They were all great, they were all great devotees of Lord Krishna. 
they had that love for Krishna, so they had spontaneous attack, spontaneous attachment for Krishna. Number five, affection in the Pandavas. The Pandavas had great affection for Lord Krishna. And number six, the devotional service in Narada. So these are six kinds of spontaneous attachment. They all have some attachment to Krishna. The gopis, Kamsa, Sishupala, the Yadus, the Pandavas, and Narada Muni. So which one is the best? We are told all six types of attraction are liberating. Only two of the six, however, are genuine types of Ragatmika Bhakti that will give the highest goal. The highest goal, prema, prema, love of God. Now, is Kamsa going to get prema, love of God, by being no. fearful of Krishna? No, right. What about Sishupal? Is he going to get love of God by being envious? No. What about the Yadus, their kinship, their, their his relative? Get love of God? But what? It's on reverence. On reverence. Mm. Okay, let's go ahead. There are two types of ragat mika bhakti. That impelled by conjugal feelings and that impelled by other relationships. So conjugal feeling is called kama rupa and other relationships sambandha. Rupa. So two types of ragat mika bhakti. The yadus they had sambandha rupa. The desire to gratify one's own senses is kama, lust. But the desire to please the senses of Lord Krishna is prema, love. So. Our desire should be to please Krishna, right? So there's kama and there's prima. Both want to satisfy the senses. So that was Ragat Mika Bhakti. Now we're speaking about Raga Nuga Bhakti. Raga Nuga Bhakti. Virajantim Abhivyaktam Brajavasi Janadishu Ragat Mikam Anushrita Yasa Raga Nugojate. Okay, all the word meanings. Translation. Devotional service in spontaneous love is vividly expressed and manifested by the inhabitants of Vrindavan. Devotional service that records with their devotional service is called Raganuga Bhakti and devotional service following in the wake of spontaneous loving service. So devotional service and spontaneous love is seen in the inhabitants of Vrindavan. We see they, they do the, the best, they're the best devotees, right? The people of Vrindavan, they're the topmost devotees. Chaitanya Mahaprabhu said, of course, and of all the people in Vrindavan, the best are the gopis. 
and then devotional service that accords with their devotional service is called Raganuga Bhakti or devotional service following in the wake of spontaneous loving service. Following in the wake of spontaneous loving service. Qualification for Raganuga Bhakti. Tat tat bhavadi murye, tat tat bhavadi madurye, shruti dir yad apakshate, natra shastram ya uktam cha, tau labot pati lakshanam. When an advanced devote, when an advanced realized devotee hears about the affairs of the devotees of Vrindavan, he becomes inclined in this way, and his intelligence becomes attracted. Indeed, he begins to covet that particular type of devotion. When such covetousness is awakened, One's intelligence no longer depends on the instruction of shastra, logic, or argument. So, it begins with hearing about the devotees of Vrindavan. We hear about the affairs of the devotees in Vrindavan and we become interested, we become very attached to it. Intelligence becomes attracted and we start to think of that type of devotion which the people in Vrindavan have. So that kind of greed begins by hearing and it happens that as we hear more our intelligence, we don't think about, any, we don't think anymore about doing things intelligently. Everything just depends on the instruction of the scriptures, logic or argument. So these Raganuga devotees do not follow the regulated principles of devotional service very strictly. But by spontaneous nature they become attracted to some of the eternal devotees such as Nanda or Yashoda and they try to follow in their footsteps spontaneously. Such eagerness to follow in the footsteps of the denizens of Braja is not possible unless one is freed from material contamination. There is a stage called anartha nivriti, the disappearance of all material contamination. So somebody may want to follow, to follow the people of Vrindavan, but Prabhupada said here, that's not possible unless, unless you're free from material contamination. So that's difficult to get free of material contamination, right? We all get so contaminated with the material world. We're taking care of so many material things. Yeah, we get involved with material things, with material offerings. All right, now we're going to speak about the qualification for Raga Nuga Bhakti. Raga Nuga Bhakti. If someone hears about the love of the residents of Vrindavan for Krishna 
And if he thinks, I'm so lowly, I'm so fallen, that is such a high thing. I could never have that. Then that is not greed. If we are thinking that the love which the people of Vrindavan have is too high for me, then you won't get it because you're not, you're not sorry enough. We have to regret that we didn't take it important. So th this greed, greed is I may be a fool, I, I may be a rascal, I may be a nonsense but still I must have it and somehow or other I must get it, I must get it. That is greed, no reservation. So this is a qualification for Raganuga Bhakti. You want it very badly, I must get it. You have to have the greed. You cannot just well, give him a seat, let him go. He's not going to help me, he's not going to give anything to help me. So, so one may think, no reservation, that's not good, we should have something. So Giri, this is a quote from Giri Raj Maharaj, he's saying, it doesn't mean that he doesn't follow the process, but he follows the process out of greed. So if he has greed, he'll follow the same process that the devotees in Vaidhi Bhakti follow. But he won't follow with the idea that the scriptures say, That has to do it. He'll follow it with the idea that in the end I'll get what I want. What do you want? What are you supposed to get in the end? Right, Vibhu Chaitanya? What's the idea? What, what, yes, in the end, what do you want to get? Prema. Yeah, right. Prema, the goal of life. Prema, right? Yes, Maharaj. Did you get it yet? No, I haven't. <laughs> Maybe just now coming, yeah? So what is the symptom of genuine greed? Vibhu. Do you have oh, could you repeat that? My internet cut there for a second. We, we want to know what is the secret? Someone is genuine greed. Shashi Kant, what do you what do you think? <coughs> Maharaj, he will be ready to pay any price for that. Right. Yeah, if he wants it. You'll be ready to pay any price. Right? Here's what Shivaram said. It is complete distaste for anything not related to Krishna. Sincere devotees, anxious to hear constantly about Krishna, quickly become indifferent to the allurements of sense gratification and liberation because the bliss of remembering Krishna and his associates is so powerful that it subdues all non-devotional attachments. So, what is the sign of greed? That, that anything not related to Krishna, he has no interest in it. He, he doesn't like it, he doesn't want anything to do with any. Whatever he does, it has to be in relation to Krishna. So he's anxious to always hear about Krishna. He won't hear anything else. He will only hear about Krishna. And he, he doesn't care about anything else. He's always remembering Krishna and Krishna's associates. And that takes away all material desires, 
all non-devotional attachments are taken away by remembering Krishna. So this is a qualification for Raganuga Bhakti. You want to do Raganuga Bhakti, you have to have this kind of greed. You don't have interest for anything else, right? Do you want to go in the Yamuna with Krishna, play with Krishna, like the gopis here? They're all playing with Krishna in the, in the Yamuna. So we're going to practice Raga, Raga Nuga Bhakti. Right? Remember we were, we were hearing about Ragat Mika Bhakti? Ragat Mika Bhakti means they are all eternal associates of Krishna. But we cannot do Ragat Mika Bhakti, but we can try to become qualified to do Raga Nuga Bhakti. So what what do you have to do? What what do you have to do to practice this bhakti? Someone read? Shashi Shashi Khan, you read. Oh. Yes, my Lord. Practicing Raganuga Bhakti. The devotee should always think of Krishna within himself and should choose a very dear devotee who is a servitor of Krishna and Vrindavan. One should constantly engage in meditating upon topics about that servitor and his loving relationship with Krishna. And one should live in Vrindavan. If one is physically unable to go to Vrindavan, he should mentally live there. All right. After his yeah. So think, tell me the name of a, of a servitor of Krishna in Vrindavan. Do you know any devotees in Vrindavan who are servants of Krishna? Yes, Maharaj. Radharani is there and uh, Sudhava is there, Nanda Maharaj is there. Oh. You want to think of Mother Yashoda. Mother Yashoda, right? Yeah. So then you have to hear, if you're going to think about, well, you wouldn't want to think about, yeah, Mother Yashoda, you could think about Mother Yashoda. So then you have to constantly engage topics about Mother Yashoda. You have to meditate upon Mother Yashoda. <coughs> and you have to meditate upon Mother Yashoda's relationship with Krishna, right? Do you know any, mm -hmm. any pastime, Mother Yashoda and Krishna? Yes, Mother Damada Lila. Right. Uh, Damada. Yeah, yeah. So, so you can remember all that pastime. And, okay, but yes, but that, then you have to also go and live in Vrindavan. <laughs> and if you're, if you're not able to go to Vrindavan, then in your mind you have to live in Vrindavan. You can go in your mind, go in your mind and you can live there in Vrindavan. So that is how you practice Raganuga Bhakti. You pick a, a very dear devotee who is a servitor of Krishna. Vibhu Chaitanya, give me the name of another devotee who lives in Vrindavan. Nanda Maharaj. Okay, Nanda Maharaj. So, what is his relationship with Krishna? He is Krishna's father. Right. So you have to meditate upon all the relation, the dealings between Krishna and Nanda Maharaj, right? Do you know any pastimes, Krishna with Nanda Maharaj? Um, the Govardhan uh, pastime where Nanda Maharaj was going to offer a charity, I mean, a lot of things to Indra, but Krishna convinced him to offer it to Govardhan instead. Yeah, very good. That's a good pastime, yeah. Krishna defeated Nanda Maharaj. Okay, so you could remember that pastime and how they talked to each other. 
how Krishna told Nanda Maharaj, you don't need to do this, no. And how Nanda Maharaj was saying, well, you know, we can do both. We'll worship Indra and we'll worship Govardhan Hill also. But Indra said, no, there's no time. There's not an, there's no time. We, it's going to take a lot. It's going to take everything we have here just to worship Govardhan Hill. Okay, so we meditate on the dealings between Nanda Maharaj and Krishna. And then you also have to go and live in Vrindavan. Are you able to go and live in Vrindavan? Vibhu Chaitanya? No. No? Why not? No. Why not? Uh, I am not sure actually. <laughs> yeah. You're not sure just now. <clears throat> Maybe you have to go to Vrindavan. At least in your mind you can live there. Have you been to Vrindavan before? Yes, I have. Okay, so you know what it's like. So you can mentally live there in Vrindavan. Just like at the beginning, we showed the picture of Radha Kund. So you can meditate on being there at the bank of Radha Kund. Okay, Vibhu, Vibhu Chaitanya Prabhu, can you read for us? Yes. The advanced devotee who is inclined to spontaneous loving service should follow the activities of a particular associate of Krishna's in Vrindavan. He should execute service externally as a regulative devotee as well as internally from his self-realized position. Thus, he should perform devotional service both externally and internally. Bhaktir Samrita Sindhu 1.2.295, Sri Chaitanya Charitamrit, Madhya Leela 22.158, the Nectar of Devotion, Chapter 16, 7 paragraph. All right. So you're an advanced devotee. He should follow the activities of an associate of Krishna in Vrindavan. So Vibhu Chaitanya is going to follow Nanda Maharaj, right? Right, Vibhu? Yes. <laughs> and then you should execute service externally as a regulative devotee. What does that mean? What? means doing service in the temple and following the regulative principles? Yeah, it means like going to program, temple program, taking part in the morning program, the evening program, go to see the deity, see RT. And then, what else should, then you have to serve Krishna internally. How are you going to serve Krishna internally? I said, By always thinking of him? Thinking of Krishna where? In Vrindavan. Well, that's a bit difficult. You could think of Krishna uh, maybe you could think of a, a more personal form of Krishna. Just like there's, Chris, there's Krishna externally. How is Cr Krishna externally? He's there in Vrindavan as a cowherd boy, son of Nanda Maharaj. And he's also internally. He's internally as a super soul in the heart of every living entity. He's also there. So he's present in two different ways, in everything and outside of everything. So the devotee, the advanced devotee who wants to do this Raganuga Bhakti, he has to follow the activities of this associate of Krishna in Vrindavan. That means he has to follow the activities of Nanda Maharaj. What does Nanda Maharaj do in Vrindavan? He oversees the... He oversees Vrindavan? Yeah. 
What does he have to take care of? The whole city? Yeah, well, Vrindavan's a village, not a city. A village. What does he have to take care of? The cows. Ah, yes. Nanda Maharaj is going to take care of the cows, right? How many cows have they got? How many cows has Nanda Maharaj got? Nine lakhs. Nine lakhs, yes. Nine lakhs. Nine hundred thousand cows. Right? So he's got a lot of cows to take care of. And you've got to feed the cows, and you've got to take them to the forest, you've got to get exercise, and they've got to get water, they need a lot of water. So where do they get water from? Yamuna. Yeah, they go to Yamuna and get water. Cows drink as much water as they want in the Yamuna. Nanda Maharaj has got to make sure also he's got a family, he's got his wife and he's got Krishna, his son, and Balaram, he's also taking care of Balaram. Is Nanda Maharaj the fa father of Balaram? Who's Balaram's father? Vasudeva. Vasudeva, right. And who's his mother? Rohini. Rohini, yes. So Rohini's there in the home of Nanda Maharaj and, and Nanda Maharaj taking care of all these people. So he has a lot to do. So the devotee, you can meditate on the activities of Nanda Maharaj. They should perf but you have to do devotional service internally and externally. So externally, you should be a regulative devotee. Externally means you have to chant your japa, you have to go to arti, you have to hear the class, you have to eat prasadam, you have to do these things. But then internally, you have to also meditate on your self-realized position, right? What is your position, self-realized, Vibhu? Have you realized yourself? What's your position? No, Maharaj, I haven't realized that yet. Well, just guess. Say you haven't, just guess. If you are meditating on Nanda Maharaj, what would be your position? Who would you meditate on to fulfill that, to be, a, you know, under, under Nanda Maharaj? Internally? I'm not quite sure. Well, you're going to be with Nanda Maharaj. Maybe you're another, you could meditate on being a, also a cowherd, a, a cowherd man, just like Nanda Maharaj. Nanda Maharaj is, is in charge of the cows. He's also, he's a gopa. He's not a gopi, he's a gopa. And so there's other gopas. You could be the friend of Nanda Maharaj and you could be serving him. Or you could be a brother of Krishna and then you're also under Nanda Maharaj, both sons of Krishna, of Nanda Maharaj. So sadhaka rup refers to the physical body of the practitioner. Just like you all have your bodies, you, you have your physical bodies here. So that's your sadhaka rup. But there's another thing called the siddha rup. And the siddha rup refers to the body which is suitable for one's desired service and which has been developed by internal meditation. So just like we talk about, we have the gross body and we have the subtle body. 
So here they're talking about something, they're talking about the sadhaka rup, the physical body, and then talking about the siddha rup. Siddha rup means the, when, you, when your body is perfect, when you've perfected your devotional service. So it's a body which is suitable for one's desired service means in the spiritual world, which you want to do in the spiritual world, you're meditating on what you're going to do. Now, if you're going to be a cowherd boy, or if you're going to be a, a you know, an, an, an associate of Nanda Maharaj, maybe you're going to be a parent of the boys. So then you have to meditate on that and you prepare yourself. So, uh, Vibhu Chaitanya Prabhu, he said, he wanted to follow Nanda Maharaj. So I said, okay. So, in his sadhana, he'll, do, he'll have a sadhana rup where he will do his service for Krishna, Lord Chaitanya. And he'll have a, also a siddha rup where he can develop his internal meditation and association with Nanda Maharaj. He will associate with Nanda Maharaj according to the opportunity he gets. So this is Janmastami Prabhu. Janmastami Prabhu, he is a uh, a disciple of Satsvarupa Das Goswami, and he is here in Mayapur just now, and he's been doing some work on these different PPTs for the nectar of devotion and nectar of instruction. So he had some communication with Banu Swami about this. Banu Swami is very knowledgeable because he's translated so many books. So Banu Swami knows the teachings of the Goswamis. So he has written, he replied to Janmastami's question. So Janmastami Jan Prabhu asked Banu Swami, he said, regarding Jiva Goswami's commentary on Bhakti... Close the door. Close. I brought the coconut and I it. I get it. Jiva Goswami's commentary on Bhakti Rasamrita Sindhu. How can the Siddha Rup develop? How can we develop the Siddha Rup when we're still on the sadhana platform? Right? We're sadhan we're doing sadhana. So how can we develop our Siddha Rup? Because Siddha Rup is the form when we're perfect. So Janmastami said. My understanding is that one Swarupa isn't revealed until one achieves Bhava Bhakti. What to speak of developing one's spiritual body while on the sadhana platform? So Janmastami is saying that we should come to Bhava Bhakti first before we know how, what our relationship is with Krishna. We won't know what is our relationship with Krishna unless we come to Bhava Bhakti. So Banaswami said, well, it's not a real spiritual body during sadhana. We're doing sadhana, we don't have a real spiritual body, we're just meditating on it. So Janmastami then said, how would I explain this to 80 sharp students in Dubai? because Janmastami Prabhu was presenting this class to the people in Dubai. So, Banaswami said, it is the preparation for the spiritual body. You attain what you think of. So this is the point. We are preparing for the spiritual body. And you get what you think of. The residents of Goloka Vrindavan exist in two manifestations, as sadhakas 
and as Siddhas. So sadhaka means not perfect, but trying to become perfect. Just like all of us, we are doing sadhana bhakti. So people who do sadhana bhakti, they are called sadhakas. And they're, they want to become perfect. When, when you become perfect, then you become a siddha. You are perfect. So two manifestations, there is the sadhaka, becoming perfect, and there is the siddha, which is already perfect. Rupa Goswami, for example, simultaneously exists in Gora Lila as Rupa Goswami. Now Rupa Goswami, he is a direct disciple of Lord Chaitanya. So he's described here as a sadhaka. He was living in Vrindavan and he was writing books and he built the big temple, worshipped Radha Govinda and built the big temple of Govindaji in Vrindavan. So he's described as, in his physical body, he's a sadhaka. That's in Lord Chaitanya's pastimes. And then in Krishna Lila, in Krishna Lila, Rupa Goswami is Rupa Manjari. So he has two forms at the same time. One is in Gora Lila, Lord Chaitanya Lila, and the other is in Krishna Lila. So in Lord Chaitanya's pastimes, he is Rupa Goswami, and in Krishna Lila, he is Rupa Manjari. So in Lord Chaitanya's pastimes, he is a sadhaka, and in Krishna Lila, he is a siddha, he is perfect. So we should meditate upon these braja, braja lokas in two ways, externally and internally. Externally means physically now and internally is the meditation. Externally. We're here. Okay, so here, how to meditate externally. One who desires to achieve the service and mood of Rupa Goswami would follow in the footsteps of Srila Rupa Goswami's sadhana. We want to follow the mood of Rupa Goswami. We have to follow his sadhana. You have to do like the Goswamis did. What did, how did the Goswamis live? Do you know? What would they do? What was the activities of the Goswamis? What did Rupa Goswami do? Who can tell me? Hare Krishna Maharaj, they would chant for uh, 22 hours and rest of the two hours they would do all the different things. Well, well, I don't know about that. I don't know if they would chant 22 hours, did they? Is that all they did? We heard, that where would they sleep? Under the tree. Under the tree. Under the tree, right. Did they sleep under the same tree every night? No, no. No, different trees every night. Why? Why? Because they were not, uh, not fixed in any particular place. And they were not attached, right? <laughs> They're not attached. Not attached. So they, pick, they, they, didn't, they didn't build a house for them to live in. They just sat under the tree. And how did they eat? They practically gave up eating, Maharaj. Oh, they didn't eat at all? Really? Practically, Miss Arma. <laughs> Nidra Hara Bihara. We sick, Maharaj. Nidra Hara Bihara. That doesn't mean Nidra. they gave up eating. It means they controlled their eating. Oh, oh dear. That's why I said, Maharaj, almost they gave up. So, how, how did they get food? By big, huh? Yes, ma'am. Madhukari, Madhukari. Madhukari, yes. Madhukari means to beg. 
right? They go like, like a bee takes the honey from the flower. The bee will take honey from the flower, and then goes to another flower. So the Goswamis would live like that. They would beg a little bit here, a little there, a little different places. So you want to develop the mood of Rupa Goswami, you have to follow in the footsteps of Rupa Goswami. You have to study all the scriptures, right? We, we sing about the Goswamis, we are singing Nana Shastra Vichari Nai Kanipano Sat Dharma Sam Tapako, right? The, the, the Goswamis, they scrutinizingly studied all the revealed scriptures to establish eternal religious principles. So we want to follow Rupa Goswami, we should also study the scriptures. You have to study all the books, Rupa, you should study his books also. So that is externally, we should follow Rupa Goswami. You see, here's the verse. Sankhya purvaka nama gananati bi kalavasani krito nidrahara vihara kadi vijito chaitanya dino chayo radha krishna gunas niter madurima nandena mataliko Bande Rupa Sanatana Ragujago Sri Jiva Gopala Go. Right? I offer my obeisances to the six Goswamis who were engaged in chanting the holy name of the Lord and bowing down in a scheduled measurement. In this way, they utilized their valuable lives, and in executing these devotional activities, they conquered over eating and sleeping, and were always meek and humble, enchanted by remembering the transcendental qualities of the Lord. Right? You want to be a Goswami? You want to be a Goswami, you have to study this song, the Goswami Astikam, and it will tell you what you're supposed to do to be a Goswami. Conquer over eating and sleeping. It means you're not controlled by eating and sleeping. And utilize their valuable life to do devotional activities. Always meek and humble bowing down and chanting the holy name. So this is the activities, this is some of the activities of a Goswami. All right, Vibhu Chaitanya Prabhu, read for me. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna Maharaj. Krishna Maharaj. Okay, so we, we got the generator going. So, We'll see how it goes. All right, so we're hearing about Rupa Goswami. Rupa Goswami, externally, we want to understand his activities. So, external Krishna consciousness, who is constantly engaged in devotional service, should not manifest himself even though, even though he has attained perfection. He should always continue to act as a neophyte. Activities in devotional service under regulative principles must be followed, even by the pure devotee. All right. Hare Krishna Maharaj, yes. I have a question. Yes. What does it mean to manifest himself? It means he shouldn't go and claim that I'm already perfect. I'm, I've already achieved perfection. I'm already a very advanced devotee. I'm already a siddha. 
I'm not a sadhaka anymore. I'm a siddha. He shouldn't claim like that. He shouldn't claim that, you know, I'm already perfect and Krishna speaks to me and we have, I have conversations with Krishna and our Radharani comes to me and she will tell me what she wants and what I have to do. You know, he won't talk like that, you know. He won't say like, this is not the mood of a devotee. He should always, con he would always continue to be a neophyte and say, I'm very fallen. I'm very unqualified. I'm not worthy. I have no qualification. So that is the sign of a devotee. But if a devotee claims, I'm very advanced, so, uh, yeah, I'm, you know, I'm a, I'm, my chanting is perfect. I don't do any wrong. I'm a, you know, I know all the scriptures. I know everything. I do, I know, and Krishna comes to me and Krishna speaks to me. No, he won't talk like that. Understand? Yes, Maharaj, thank you. Yes, can I ask you a question, Gurudev? Yes. Of, um, uh, and then, if, if a devotee practice the uh, 50 years, but still he is so fallen, so how can he convince um, convince uh, others to join Krishna consciousness? Well, it's not that you have to claim I'm so fallen, but just the fact that you practice something for 50 years, that should be, that's good that you did something for 50 years, so it must be something good. That, okay, you know, I, you know, I can't say I'm perfect, but I've been doing, doing for 50 years, so there's definitely something there that it keeps you practicing. If you keep practicing all that time, it must be something good. Even though, you know, I'm very fallen, I'm, yeah, I'm, I, I'm not a great devotee or anything, but but it's very, it's just very nice to be a devotee and to try to be a devotee. I'm just trying to be a devotee. I'm not a good devotee, I'm just trying to be a devotee. So that humility, that example is very good. That is attractive to people. But if, you, if you're proud, that's not going to attract people to Krishna consciousness. Yes. Hmm? Yes, I can understand now. Okay. Okay, so we spoke about the external feature. The externally, we'll be humble and we'll chant a lot and we'll do a lot of service. And internally, internally, for example, one who desires to achieve the service and mood of Srila Rupa Goswami would internally meditate on the activities of Srila Rupa Manjari, nicely described by Raghunath Das Goswami in Braja Vilasa Stava, by offering her betel nuts, by massaging her feet, by bringing her water, by arranging for her secret meeting with Lord Krishna and by performing many other services, many gopi maidservants affectionately please Sri Radha, who is more dear than life. I take shelter of those gopi maidservants who have Srila Rupa Manjari as their leader. So that is, uh, that is from the book by Raghunath Das Goswami, Brajavilastava. It's written about the pastimes of the gopis and the manjaris and how they serve Krishna and Radha, how they give service to Srimati Radharani and Lord Krishna. And so within the mind, devotees should meditate like that. We said Rupa Goswami, in Vrindavan, he is Rupa Manjari, 
in Krishna Leela, he is Rupa Manjari, and in Gora Leela, he is Rupa Goswami. So you have to, externally you follow Rupa Goswami, and internally you meditate on the pastimes of Rupa Manjari. So externally you follow the sadhana of Rupa Goswami, chanting, studying these things, controlling the eating and sleeping and very eager to study and chant, all right? Internally, when he realizes his actual position in relationship with the Lord, he can, along with the discharging of regulative service, think within himself of the Lord under the guidance of a particular associate of the Lord and develop his transcendental sentiments in following that associate. All right, when we realize our actual position, so we know there are different rasas with Krishna. Somebody can be a servant of Krishna, someone can be the friend of Krishna, Someone can be parent of Krishna and someone can be the lover of Krishna. So, so can, Vibhu, can Vibhu Chaitanya be a lover of Krishna? Can he be a gopi in the spiritual world? Yes. And can Malin, Malin be a cowherd boy in the spiritual world? Uh, yes. Yes, right. We, we're, we're not the body. We're all servants of Krishna. And we see Lord Chaitanya's, in Lord Chaitanya's Leela, the associates of Lord Chaitanya. Recording in progress. In Krishna Leela, all of these people were gopis. But they came in Gora Lila as men. But in Krishna Lila they were all gopis. So, how to practice Raganuga Bhakti? Learned Acharyas know that the 64 practices of Vaidhi Bhakti headed by hearing and chanting are also useful in Raganuga Bhakti. So even though we're doing Raganuga Bhakti, you still have to hear and chant. You have to follow all the principles. You have to follow strictly all the rules and regulations. And, and it helps you also in Raganuga Bhakti. We don't think, I'm doing Raganuga Bhakti, now I don't need to go to Mongol Arti. Now I don't need to chant. I don't need to chant. Now I don't need to fast on a courtesy. No, we do everything. So Raganuga Bhakta does not ba abandon regular hearing and chanting, but he focuses his hearing and chanting upon topics that specifically nourish his serving mood because he has a particular desire to serve Krishna in a particular way. Just like I said, somebody wants to follow Nanda Maharaj. So we'll read about Nanda Maharaj's pastimes and we'll meditate on Nanda Maharaj's pastimes. Not that we want to become Nanda Maharaj, but we want to follow Nanda Maharaj. And somebody else maybe wants to follow Mother Yashoda. So we'll hear about Mother Yashoda and Damodar Leela and we'll want to follow the mood of Mother Yashoda. And someone else wants to follow Srimati Radharani. We'll hear about Srimati Radharani and all of her pastimes and we'll meditate like that.
worshipping the deity. So the Raganuga Bhakta does not give up worshipping the deity, but he does so in a way conducive to his devotional mood. All right, so you're going to worship the deity, uh, just like if you're worshipping Lord Chaitanya. You say you're worshipping Gornitai. And so if you're a sadhika and you're worshipping Gornitai, then we will worship them like they are the, the lords, right? If we're doing sadhana like Rupa Goswami, then we will be very respectful to Gornitai. But if we are worshipping, if we are worship in, more in the mood of the apparent, then we will think of Lord Chaitanya and Lord Nityananda like our son. Just like some people will worship Lord Chaitanya and Lord Nityananda like their children. We have two children worshipping them in that mood. So the mood would be different according to the, ma the mood which the person is practicing his bhakti. Now, there are some people who do a, something called Siddha Pranali. Siddha Pranali it means it's a mantra which they chant, they get a mantra which they chant and they say this mantra is for their spiritual body. They, they go to some people, they go to somebody and they, and they pay some money to him and the man gives you the mantra and he said, okay, he said, you're in the spiritual world, you are, maybe they'll say you are a gopi or maybe they'll say you are a tree or you're a cow and they'll give you a mantra and you chant this mantra and it's to help you to develop your spiritual body. So they call this Siddha Pranali. So some people do this, they want to know what body I've got in the spiritual world. I want to know what is my rasa with Krishna. Am I a gopi or am I a cow or am I a tree? What is my form in the spiritual world? And they go to the guru and he will give them some mantra and they chant this mantra and it allows them to develop their spiritual body. So they imagine that they have become associates of the Lord simply by thinking of themselves like that. Actually, they're not qualified. They, this is not a good thing. You have to understand this Siddha Pranali is very bad. It's very wrong. But some people, they do it. They, they get taken in and they do like that. They imagine they have become an associate of Krishna or Lord Chaitanya just by thinking like that. Actually, they have no qualification, but they think they have become like that. So, the word Braja Loka refers only to the residence of Vrindavan in Krishna Lila, such as Srila Rupa Manjari, and not to the residence of Vrindavan in their Gora Lila, such as Srila Rupa Goswami. So they think like that. They think that this word Braja Loka is only in relation to Krishna Lila. But Lord Chaitanya also has Lila in, in, in Braja Loka. Lord Chaitanya also came to Braja. And Rupa Goswami is there in Braja. He's also there in Lord Chaitanya's Lila in Vrindavan. So you have, we have to understand there's two kinds of Lila going on in Vrindavan. There's Krishna Lila and there's Gora Lila. And then another thing which is wrong is that they interpret Seva Sadaka Rupena, Siddha Rupena Chatrahi. 
to mean that one should imitate the activities of the gopis, both as one's external sadhana and as one's internal meditation. So this is their interpretation. They say that you have to, and they will, they will, they'll get the men to put on a sari, and they'll dress the man up like a gopi, and they'll put on all the jewelry like a gopi, they'll wear the bracelets on their, on their wrists, and then they'll put on the makeup, and they'll uh, pretend that they're gopis, and they'll act like ladies, like gopis. And so the men doing this, they're imitating, but they're saying this is a, this is their, they're thinking this is sadhana, but it's, it's very wrong. You shouldn't do like that. They, they do it externally. Internally you can meditate like that, but not externally. That would be wrong. And then also, their behavior is not according to the regulated principles. So these are some of the faults of the Siddha Pranali. It's a very wrong thing. So in the time of Bhaktisiddhanta Sarasati Prabhupada, there were many people doing this Siddha Pranali. And they were going and they were getting the mantra, and like that, but Bhaktisiddhanta Sarasati, he preached against it and he showed us very wrong and he defeated them and he smashed them. So this is what Prabhupada said about Raganuga Bhakti. Somebody read? Bhaktivatsal. Bhaktivatsal? Yes, Maharaj. Read. Devotee, I read somewhere in your, in your writings that in order to understand the confidential affairs of Radha and Krishna, one must serve the gopis who are servants of the gopis. And I assume that you were a servant of the gopis. Is that correct? Or how do I serve the servants of the gopis? Srila Prabhupada. Gopis, they are not conditioned souls. They are liberated spirits. So first of all, you have to come out from this conditioned life. Then the question of serving gopis will come. Don't be at the present moment very eager to serve gopi. Just try to get out of your conditional life. Then time will come when you'll be able to serve gopi. In this conditional stage, we cannot serve anything. Okay. Is clear what's Prabhupada saying here? Bhaktivasa, what's Prabhupada telling us? saying that we should focus on what we are right now, we need to get free from condition life. Keep reading. But Krishna gives us opportunities to accept service in this archa marga. Just like we keep the deity of Krishna, offer prasad under regulation, under principle. So we have to advance in this way, chanting, hearing, and worshipping in the temple, arti, offering prasada. In this way, as we advance, automatically Krishna will reveal to you, and you'll understand your position, how you have to. Gopi mean, gopis means who are always constantly engaged in the service of the Lord. So that eternal relationship will be revealed. So we have to wait for that. Immediately, we cannot Im imitate serving gopis. That's a good idea that you shall serve gopi, but it will take time, not immediately. Immediately we have to follow the rules and regulations and routine work. All right. Immediately we have to follow. Oh. Okay, so this Prabhupada on <sighs> gopis, on Rakanuga Bhakti. Prabhupada is saying, immediately have to follow rules and regulations, routine work. Gopis, what is our relationship with Krishna? Do you all know? What is your relationship with Krishna? Bhaktabhatsa? Bhaktabhatsa, what's your relationship with Krishna? Eternal servants of Krishna. Yes, good. Yes, we're all eternal servants. Jivarswarupahai Nitya Krishna Das. All of us, we're all servants of Krishna. You don't need to know more than that. 
Just do service to Krishna, engage in service. Okay, Banu Swami on Raga Nuga Bhakti. Janmastami Prabhu asks, okay, who's going to read? Uh, is uh, the devotee from Germany there? Yeah, I can do. Banu Swami on Raga Nuga on Raghunaga Bhakti. Jamastami does. Someone who successfully executed Raghunatha and Baba eventually enters into Raga Raghatmika Bhakti, correct? Maybe not as Yashoda, but as an elderly gopi, Mandari, cowherd boyfriend, and so on, correct? Banu Swami. Yes, do we not become someone else, but assume. Oh, no, no. Yes, we do not become someone else, but assume the identity of a follower of one of the Nitya Siddha associates. 6th May 2009, email exchange. Okay, so the, you see the Raga Mika, Raga Mika Bhakta, they're eternally liberated souls. The Raga Mika Bhakti, if you do Raga Mika Bhakti, that is, that's a very, that's a perfect stage. These are all the perfect devotees who are doing the Ragat Mika Bhakti. So Janmastami is saying, if somebody is successful doing Raga Nuga and Baba, then will he come to Ragat Mika Bhakti? Will he become to that position? Of course, you won't become Mother Yashoda. Nobody can become Mother Yashoda, just as nobody can become Krishna or Radharani. But maybe we can become an elderly gopi or a manjari or a cowherd boy. And Banus, Banu Swami said, yes. He said, we don't become someone else. You don't get someone else's position. They're eternal associates. They have their identity eternally. But we, get, we can become a follower of one of these Nitya Siddha associates. Nitya Siddha associate means the eternally perfect associates. Right? Who wants to become a Nitya Siddha devotee? You have to do Raga Nuga. First you have to do Raga Nuga and then come to Bhava and then come to Nitya Siddha. <laughs> so a long way. So should we practice Raga Nuga Bhakti or not? Right? Who's like to read? Who didn't read yet? No. Yeah. Keep, keep reading Prabhu, the boy from Germany. Oh. To practice Raganuga Bhakti or not, after Shivaram Swami quotes uh, at last one third of the last paragraph of, of Nectar of Instruction purport for text 8, purport in which Rila Prabhupada quotes Bhakti Siddhanta Sarasvati Thakur as follows. In the Dasyaras, one follows in the footsteps of servant like Chitkara, Pratkara, or Raktaka. In the friendly Sakyarasa, one can become a friend like Baladeva, Sridam, or Sudam. In the Vatsalarasa, characterized by parental affection, one can become like Nanda Maharaj and Yashoda. And in the Madhurya Ras, characterized by conjugal law, one can become like Srimati Radharani or her lady friends such as Lalita, and serving made manjaris like Rupa and Rati. This is the essence of all instruction in the matter of devotional service. Hmm. Okay. Uh, there's a bit, there's more. Oh. Shivaram quoted the last one third of the paragraph. So that, that's from the purport. And then Shivaram Swami writes. Go ahead Prabhu. Uh, to be Krishna conscious, to be Krishna consciousness, then means to qualify oneself for spontaneous devotion in one of the four mellows of Raja Bhakti as exemplified by Krishna's eternal com companions. Because this understanding is confidential, Srila Prabhupada rarely spoke of it in public and wrote about it only sparingly in his books. Yet because it is the essence of Krishna consciousness, his divine grace to talk about it, did write about it, and did expect thoughtful devotees to understand and carefully pursue it. Uh, Shivaram Swami, Sudha Bhakti Chintamani, page 40. 
All right? So Shivaram Swami is pointing out that spontaneous devotion, meaning Raga Nuga Bhakti, is in, is in one of four mellows of Braja Bhakti. Braja Bhakti, four mellows, meaning servant, friend, parent, and conjugal love. And then he talks about this, Krishna's eternal, eternal companions. So you practice one of these, you follow one of these devotees who are in Krishna's Leela. So Shiva Ram Swami said Prabhupada did write about it. He didn't talk much about it, but he did sometimes talk about it, and he did write about it, and he expects people to also know about it and to understand it, and some people will practice it. Not everybody, but some people will take up the practice. So, who should practice? Who should practice this Raganoka Bhakti? What is the qualification? Yes, go ahead, Prabhu, keep reading. If greed is there and we hear of the conjugal pastimes of the Lord, then it will be beneficial, otherwise we will degrade into lusty thoughts. Srila Prabhupada would say in this regard, instead of purified, we will be putrefied. Yeah, putrefied. Uh, Guru Raj Swami. Yeah, put, putrefied. We'll become put, instead of purified, we'll be putrefied. Putrefied means, <laughs> purified is good, putrefied very bad. You, we don't want to be putrefied, right? Putrefied, it means very contaminated, very dirty. And so we don't want that. We want to be purified. So, so there has to be greed, that we, we, we have a strong desire to want to hear about Krishna's pastimes, that will be very good for us. Otherwise, we may just become lusty, lusty thoughts. So that's, some people, if they hear Rasa Leela, they become lusty. Other people, they hear Rasa Leela, they become purified. And so some people are qualified to hear the pastimes of Krishna, and some people are not. If we become lusty, it is not good. All right, uh, um, maybe we'll have a Mataji read. Shobhamai Keshavi. Yes, Maharaj, Hare Krishna. So to practice Raga Anuga Bhakti or not, Srila Bhakti Vinod Thakur and Srila Bhakti Siddhanta Saraswati Thakur fought vigorously against unscrupulous men and women who were practicing debauchery, sexual indulgence, in the name of Raga Nuga Bhakti. Their vigorous preaching and prolific writings reinstated pure devotion to its rightful place as the topmost of spiritual practices. Without hiding or prohibiting the practice of Raga Nuga Bhakti, they cautioned sincere devotees about the risk, risks of taking up such practices prematurely. Shivram Swami, Shuddha Bhakti Chintamani 266. Oh, so even Bhakti Vinod Thakur, he also fought against uh, the, this uh, deviations in practicing Raganuga Bhakti. And the deviation is they become, the people can become debauched and they get involved in even sexual relationships, illicit sexual relationships. And they do it in the name of Raganuga Bhakti. So that is a very serious thing, very bad offence. That in the name of practising spiritual uh, devotional practices, people are engaging in sinful activities. So Bhakti, Bhakti Vinod Thakur and Bhakti Siddhanta Sarasati Prabhupada, they both had to write about this and preach against this, and they fought to establish what is the proper place and what is the proper behaviour of devotees. So without hiding or prohibiting Raganuga Bhakti, they, they, they didn't hide it, they didn't stop it, but they warned people that you have to be very sincere and there are risks in taking it up. As if you're not qualified, there are risks. So you have to be very... Uh, fixed up, very strong in your Krishna consciousness before you could consider to take up Raganuga Bhakti. Mm. Ok, 
keep reading, Maharaj Yes, Maharaj. To practice Raga Nuga Bhakti or not, Bhakti Siddhanta Saraswati Thakur recommends intensive counter propaganda. We should present the right conception of spontaneous devotion and thus stem the tide of immature practice. He further explains that spontaneous devotion is part and parcel of the soul and cannot be ignored. Instead, it should be understood through the teachings of Rupa Goswami by devotees surrendered to the lotus feet of their spiritual masters. Okay. <laughs> so intensive counter-propaganda <laughs> to, to give people the right understanding of what is Raganuga Bhakti and how to practice it properly and not to do it immaturely. You have to be qualified. So to come to that level, you have to be very, very serious in your Krishna consciousness. So the spontaneous devotion, meaning Raganuga Bhakti, is part and parcel of the soul, cannot be ignored. And so it's natural that people will want to devote themselves to Krishna in that way. But it should be understood through the teachings. You, has to be, you have to be guided by Shastra and by devotees who are surrendered to their gurus. So we don't do it independently. Hey, go ahead, Maharaji. In sadhakas who continue on the path of regulative devotion, who are not drawn to ragatmika bhakti, mature greed naturally appears at the stage of ecstasy. Like devotees who reach ecstasy by spontaneous practice, such sadhakas then plunge into the oceanic bliss of Vrajaseva and frolic there eternally. So sadhakas, they're not perfect, they're sadhakas, they're doing sadhana, they'll continue with the regulative devotion. They'll continue with all the practices which regular ordinary devotees are doing. And they may not be drawn to Raganuga Bhakti. They don't have that greed to go to Bhakti. But that greed will appear, it, will, it may appear at the stage of ecstasy. Mature greed naturally appears. So Shivaram Maharaj, he's saying that this mood of Raganuga Bhakti will come naturally. You don't have to force it. It will come on its own when we, the more we become ecstatic in our service to Krishna. And he, he says, just like devotees who, be, who reach ecstasy by spontaneous practice, so the, such sadhakas plunge into the ocean of braja seva. Braja seva means serving the inhabitants of Vrindavan and frolic there eternally. All right, is, is San, San, uh, Sanjya Mataji there? You can read? Yes, Maharaj. <clears throat> Those following Lord Chaitanya's line by preaching and doing Sankirtan who are aware of Raga Bhakti, whose goal is Vraj and Krishna in spontaneous devotion, who are not doing Raga Nuga Sadhana Bhakti, but are following regulated practice, are not doing Ashwarya Vadi sadhana. They are following the Vidhi of Raga Bhakti and as appropriate to a work preaching organization. Kali Yuga mentalities and most important of all as given us by our perfected Acharyas, Srila Prabhupada and Srila Bhakti Siddhanta Saraswati Thakur. Thus, these devotees do not go to Vaikuntha, but as followers of Goranga and his associates, they go to Golok Braj. Yam Yam Vapi Smaran Bhavam. Yeah, Haribo? Hare Krishna? Can anybody hear me? Yes, yes Maharaj. I can hear you. What happened to Sad Sandhya? I think some internet problem, Maharaj. Okay. Okay. Um, Narayani? 
Narayan is there? Yeah, you can finish reading. Yum yum. From that part. The sense of bhakti is its mood and intent. If the mood and intent are for, it will take one to Golaka. If it is for Ashwarya, it will take one to Vaikuntha. Mm. Okay. Uh, okay, so let's have a look at this. Uh. So Shivaram Swami is talking about people doing Sankirtan and preaching work. So, you know, because it said to do Raga Bhakti, you're supposed to go and live in Vrindavan. So if everybody goes to Vrindavan and sits down in Vrindavan, there'll be nobody preaching and doing Sankirtan. And people may say, well, I want to go to Goloka. If I don't go to Goloka, I, I, won't, I won't be able to, if I don't get in, if I don't go to Vrindavan, I won't be able to go to Goloka. And so then all the preaching would stop. And so Shiva Ram Swami is explaining that in Lord Chaitanya's line, we, we do preaching and Sankirtan. And we are aware of Raga Bhakti. And we know the goal is Vrindavan, Braja. And the goal is Krishna and Raga, Raga Nuga Bhakti, spontaneous devotion. And we're not doing, who are not doing Raga Nuga Sadhana Bhakti, but are following regulated practices. Just like, you know, you're staying in a temple. So we're following the regulated practices. We're not doing Raga, Raga Nuga Sadhana Bhakti because we didn't go to Vrindavan to just sit down and chant, but we're staying to preach. So, our, what is our level? So, Shivaram Swami said, we are not doing, we're not doing Aishwarya Vaidhi Sadhana. He said, they are following the Vidhi of Raga Bhakti. They are following the Vidhi. Of Raga Bhakti. What is the meaning of Vidhi? Rules. Yes. They're following the rules of Raga Bhakti as appropriate to a world preaching organization. Kali Yuga mentalities. And most important of all, as given by our Acharyas. Thus, these devotees do not go to Vaikuntha, right? If they were doing the other, if they are doing this Aishwarya, Vaidhi Sadhana, then they will go to Vaikuntha. But he said, no, although they're preaching and doing Sankirtan, they're followers of Lord Chaitanya, they're followers of Lord Garanga and his associates. So they go to Goloka Braja. They go to Valoka because they are doing the kirtan in the mood of Braja, in the mood of Vrindavan. Although they're not in Vrindavan, but they're in the mood of Vrindavan. And then Shiva Ram Swami quotes from the Bhagavad Gita, whatever we remember at the time of death, that is the state you will attain. So he said, the, the, the essence of bhakti is the mood and the intent. So it's not just being in Vrindavan and sitting in Vrindavan and chanting. You can do preaching and Sankirtan and you can be doing Raga, Raga Nuga Bhakti. If the mood are, and intent are for Raga Mika, it will take one to Goloka. And if it is for Aishwarya, it will take one to Vaikuntha. Now, I don't know, Vaikuntha is okay also, isn't it? <laughs> but some people, they want very much Goloka. Some people think, oh, Vaikuntha no good, I want to go to Goloka. I want to be with Krishna and Goloka, Goloka Vrindavan. And they think Vaikuntha no good. And so it depends what is the mood. If your mood is for Aishwarya, meaning opulence, if you just want to be opulent, then you go to Vaikuntha. But if you like Vrindavan, and you like the cows, and you like the mood of being with Krishna in Goloka, in Goloka Vrindavan, 
then you can go there. It depends on where is your mind, what is your mood, where do you want to go. All right. Who, uh, yes, yes Narayani Madhiji? One who is extremely fortunate may get the mercy of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. As much as one can devote his full attention to the lotus feet of Lord Chaitanya, to that extent, you will be able to taste the nectarian service of the lotus feet of Srimati Radharani in Raja. The more one engages in the service of Sri Chaitanya, the more one finds oneself in Vrindavana tasting the nectar of the service of Sri Radha. Srila Prabodhananda Saraswati, Sri Chaitanya Charitam, Chandratma, text 88. Hmm. Sri Chaitanya Chandramrita. The one who is extremely fortunate will get the mercy of Lord Chaitanya. Just as one can devote his full attention to Lord Chaitanya. So that if we devote ourselves fully to Lord Chaitanya, then we will also taste the service of Srimati Radharani in Vrindavan. The more we serve Lord Chaitanya, the more we will find ourselves in Vrindavan, tasting the nectar of the service of Radha, Srimati Radharani. Lord Chaitanya taught how to experience Radha Bhav, to develop the love for the service of Srimati Radharani. So if we follow Lord Chaitanya, by doing sankirtan and preaching, then we'll get the mercy of Lord Chaitanya. And Lord Chaitanya is teaching all of us how to go to Vrindavan, how to get the mood of Vrindavan. Just like Prabhupada, Prabhupada went to America, but he would sit there and say to people, I'm not in America, I'm in Vrindavan, I'm always in Vrindavan, I'm always thinking of Vrindavan. I'm always there with Krishna in Vrindavan, although he was sitting in New York. So that mood can be there. Yeah, go ahead, Narayani. That person who feelingly appreciates the movement of Lord Gauranga gets the Adhikara to enter Radha Krishna Nitya Lila. By accepting Lord Gauranga's associates as Nitya Siddha devotees, one can be immediately promoted to the transcendental abode of Lord Krishna. One who dives deep into the ocean of Lord Gauranga's movement becomes a confidential devotee of Sri Radha Madhava. Sri Narutama Das Thakura in Gaurangira to Deepada. So, he's saying that if we appreciate Sankirtan, if we like Sankirtan, that will allow us to enter into the eternal pastimes of Radha and Krishna. We just have to accept Lord Chaitanya's associates and we can also be, get to go to the, the place of Krishna. Nara, uh, Lila Avatar Maharaji, you can read. Yes. This humble servant of Radha and her beloved Krishna always hopes for Kirtan, and he begs all to loudly sing the names of Lord Hari. The transcendental power of congregational chanting automatically awakens remember remembrance of the Lord and his divine pastimes in relation to one's own eternal spiritual form. Only at the time does it become possible to go off to a solitary place and engage in the confidential worship of their lordships. Okay, so Srila Bhaktisiddhanta Sarasati Prabhupada teaching us what should be our mood should be a humble servant of Radha and Krishna and always want to do kirtan, wants to sing the holy name, to chant the holy name. And the power of chanting 
helps us to remember Krishna and all of his pastimes in relation to Krishna. So when, when we chant the holy name and we remember Krishna like that, then it's possible to go to a, a quiet place and to just worship. Yes, now we will have Sita, um, Maylin read. Yeah, go ahead, Maylin. Tamal Krishna Goswami, uh, what hope is there? Instead of thinking of Krishna, I'm thinking of the temple fa finances. Srila Prabhupada said, so many lifetimes we have wasted on ourselves. Now for this one lifetime, let, let us work hard and uh, so to push on Lord Chaitanya's Sankirtana moment. Then at the end of life, Lord Chaitanya will personally come and cover whatever we like and take us back to Godhead. Tama Krishna Goswami Literature Transcribed by Bhakti Vikasha Swami hmm. So Prabhupada was, you know, Sometimes devotees would complain like this, that, you know, we're just working to get money, always thinking temple finances, where's the money and like that. But Prabhupada encouraged him, he said, okay, it's, it's all right, he said, just do, push on the Sankirtan, work hard to do Sankirtan, to spread the Sankirtan movement, and at the end of life, Lord Chaitanya will come and take you back to Godhead. Even we like something. Whatever we lack, Lord Chaitanya will cover it, take us back, right? Just like in the Bhagavad Gita, Lord Krishna says, Yoga Kshema Vaham Yaham, I carry what you lack, I preserve what you have. Yes, Sitala? Yes. I preach that life comes from life and uh, Defeating the uh, s s scientists. S scientists, you will realize your Swarupa in Raja. Shri Papa to Bhak Bhakti Swarupa Damda Swami, who taught Devarmata Swami, who taught Swarama Swami. Mm. <laughs> Parampara. Eh? So, Swarup Damodar Maharaj, he was a scientist and Prabhupada wanted him to preach to the scientists. And then he was saying, oh, you know, I just want to meditate on Krishna and Vrindavan. But Prabhupada told him, no, you preach that life comes from life and defeat the scientists. And then you will realize your Swarup in Vrindavan. Prabhupada didn't tell him just, oh, just think about your Swarup. He said, you preach the scientists and defeat them, convince them about life coming from life, then Krishna will reveal your Swarup to you. Hmm? There are Gostanandis and Bhajananandi. Bhajananandi is interested in his own welfare or they think that he is not competent enough to preach. Therefore, he does not go for preaching work. Swavi Mukti Kanta. Let me look after my own affairs. Oil your own machine. So this is another stage. Our other stage is a devotee taking all risk. Preaching for the benefit of the whole human society. He is called Gostanandi increasing the number of devotees. That is preferred by Krishna. It is said in the Bhagavad Gita, Yaimam paramam guyam madbhakti shabdhatyati Anyone who is engaged in preaching this confidential science of Bhagavad Gita, nachatasman manushyeshu kishchin me priyakritama Nobody is dearer to me than he is. So if you want very quickly recognition by Krishna, go on preaching Krishna consciousness, even if it is imperfectly done. But because you are sincere in your whatever capacity you have got, if you preach, 
then Krishna will be very much pleased. A lecture given in Delhi in March 1976. So there's the two kinds of people. There's the ghost of Anandi, the one who's preaching. And the Bhajan Anandi, he's just sitting chanting. He doesn't do any preaching. So probably better you go and preach. If you preach, you'll get recognized by Krishna. Even you don't do it very good. But it doesn't matter if you're sincere, whatever capacity, Krishna will be very pleased. All right? So what did we cover today? We tried to present something about Raganuga Bhakti. And we talked about the appropriate attitude for ISKCON devotees towards Siddha Pranali. Right? There was what happened, one devotee went to get Siddha Pranali secretly. He shouldn't have done it, but he did it. And he didn't know it was wrong. And what happened was the guru gave him a mantra. He paid money to this man, and the man gave him a mantra. And the, the man told him, he said, in the spiritual world, you're a peacock. And so he came back and was going around like a peacock. He was trying to do like a peacock. <laughs> now people were laughing at him, you know, the fool, the stupid fool. <laughs> he thought he's going to be a peacock in the spiritual world. And so we have to understand this is all wrong. You don't care what is your rasa with Krishna. You don't, don't get cheated like that. And we're speaking now also about what is the proper attitude to be a member of ISKCON and what is our view towards the practice of Raganuga Bhakti. Raganuga Bhakti, you can do it with the blessing of, you have to get the blessing from your spiritual master. He will know if you're qualified or not. So that is the point. You should get the blessing from your senior Vaishnavas. And final quote from Prabhupada, Then everything will be finished, preaching will be finished. In this Sahajya party, then preaching will be finished. They have learned it from these Radha Kunda Babaji's. Sahajya means people who take everything very cheap. They think, oh yeah, I can do Raganuga Bhakti. They can't follow four principles, and they can't chant sixteen rounds, but they think they can do Raganuga Bhakti. So that is Sahaja. So if people want to do like that, then the preaching will stop. So Prabhupada said, this is going on from Radha Kund. Some Babaji's in Radha Kund are like that. They don't follow strictly. They, do, they don't follow principles, they don't follow strictly. They're Sahajas. Take everything cheap. All right, are there any questions? Anybody? Sitala has a question? No? Okay. Anybody has a question? Krishna Maharaj. Yes, Mandaji. Maharaj, um, uh, I didn't quite understand uh, how one can prepare to practice Raga Nuga Bhakti. He said that it is spontaneous. So how can... Uh, I didn't quite understand that, Maharaj. Well, they were saying that what you have to do, you, you start to read more. Like, first of all, you develop a particular interest in one person in Vrindavan. You have to become particularly ident attached to hearing about one particular person in the pastimes of Krishna in Vrindavan. And you should hear about that person. And, you know, we give the example Rupa Goswami. And today in the slides it was talking, if you're attached, somebody may be very attracted to Rupa Goswami. Oh, I really like Rupa Goswami, you know. And so then you start to hear about Rupa Goswami and what happened to Rupa Goswami and what did he do and what, what was his pastimes. And read his book, like Nectar of Devotion we're reading, he wrote this book. And then you also have to meditate on his, his identity in Vrindavan, in Krishna Leela. Because as Rupa Goswami, he's a sadhaka, but as a siddha, he is Rup, he is Rupa Manjari. So then you have, to th you have to read the book by Raghunath Das Goswami and it tells you about Rupa Manjari, 
what he does in Krishna Lila, what she does rather, because Rupa Manjari, right, becomes Rupa Man So like that you, you follow Rupa Goswami, but you become very interested to hear more about Rupa Goswami and you, you hear about you know, his, his activity and his sadhana, what he did, and you try to follow also like he did, a lot of chanting and reading and studying and these things. So you have to develop, maybe you're attracted to Mother Yashoda, I don't know, maybe you're attracted to the gopis, you want to be like the gopi. Then you pick a particular gopi and you find out what this gopi does and who is she in Gora Leela and Chaitanya Leela, you know. Just like Srimati Radharani, she comes as Gadarhar Pandit. And so then you can think about Gadarhar Pandit and you follow Gadarhar Pandit and you read about Gadarhar Pandit. And you, Gadarhar Pandit, he studied the Srimad Bhagavatam a lot. He read every day Srimad Bhagavatam. Lord Chaitanya would come and hear Srimad Bhagavatam from Gadarhar Pandit. And he also worshipped a deity. His deity is the Gopinath, Tota Gopinath. And so, you know, like the, you have to develop, you develop a particular interest in one particular resident of Vrindavan. And you've, you have to cultivate that interest and hear more, concentrate on them. Yeah? Yeah. Okay. Yes, Prabhu. Maharaj, regarding this uh, selection, that uh, whom in which four steps should we follow, means uh, that selection should be done under, by, under the guidance and blessing of special master, right? Yes. Yes, you must have the blessings of your spiritual master to take up this kind of practice. Because usually what happens is people go to Vrindavan they go to Vrindavan to do this. You should reside in Vrindavan. But if you don't go there, then mentally you have to reside in Vrindavan. And so we are in Mayapur, not difficult to think of Vrindavan. Mayapur is not different from Vrindavan. But at the same time, you have to do your practice, you have your service, you have to do the regulated practices. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yes. Sorry. Sorry, I just had one more uh, yeah. question. So, um, then we were speaking about the mood in which we worship um, the Lord. So, yeah, while we understand that um, Goloka Vrindavana, uh, we need to worship the Lord in the, you know, Shyam Sundar form and we follow the footsteps of uh, Gaurang Mahaprabhu. But then we also glorify the Lord in other forms, especially during the appearance days of, uh, you know, say Rama, uh, Lord Ram, Narsimdev. So we also worship, we have that mood and we develop that mood over a period of time. Say if we have some festival during the, you know, uh, Ram Navami or something, so we develop that mood and we worship in that mood. So then uh, where are we? Yeah, it's, it's mixed. It's not like constantly we worship the Lord in, uh, you know, in this form only. So how do we understand that, Maharaj? Oh yeah, yeah, you're right. Yeah, there are definitely other festivals come along. Lord Chaitanya would also take part in these festivals. Lord Chaitanya observed the different festivals. Certainly, we would want to hear about Lord Ramachandra. We would take part in that, that kind of festival. The different avatars when they appear, we would want to hear about them. That's a that's part of our sadhaka, the sadhana, right? To hear, to take part in these things and to observe these different festivals. Yes, that would be part of our sadhana, and, and all the devotees would do these things. They'd all take part in these things. So, it's not against the principles. It, it's part of. It can also be part of your raganuga bhakti. Hmm? But generally, in your in your own private personal study, you would focus on that particular resident of Vrindavan. Yeah? Mm. Sure, my dad. Yes? Shashi, uh, I had a, somebody else had a question? I had a question. Yes, Prabhu? Or confusion, sort of, regarding the 
Goshtyananda and Bhajanandan, Bhajanananda, I think it was. Um, when we've heard that Bhajananda is superior, we we should go out and preach. But I've also heard that it's it can be somewhat risky, especially for beginners like Kanishta Adhikari or Madhikari, if we're not strong enough and then we end up taking association rather than giving us association. So then what should be our understanding with that? Focus on well, ourselves. when we go out for preaching work, we don't want to go alone. You shouldn't go alone. That's the idea. When we go out for preaching work, generally we go out as a party. And it, 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 it's certainly risky if you go out on your own. Anything can happen. But, you know, when, you, when we go out for preaching, you go with another person. Then it makes it very nice. So sometimes, you know, husband and wife go together for book distribution. Sometimes, you know, two ladies or sometimes two men. You go, you go with somebody else, you know. Or you go with the party, Sankirtan party, and you distribute books around the Sankirtan party. And you keep with the Sankirtan party. So you're not far away from the devotees. But you don't want to just go off on your own trying to preach. That's dangerous. Yeah, that can be dangerous. Especially if we're new, if we're not very steady in our Krishna consciousness. So it's, it's always good to have association. And we, we see, for example, you see like the, 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 there's those uh, people from the Mormon church, the Christian group in America called the Mormon church. They never go alone. They're always pairs. There's always two of them there, you know. It, it's a good principle to actually have somebody with you. You don't want to be... Swami Narayan people also, you know, they're sannyasis. When they go, they don't go alone. They go as a group, you know, always have a group of them, they go together. And that's a good practice. It's certainly there's a lot of risks if you go alone anywhere. It is risky. You have to be very, very serious and very convinced to do it. So, if you're thinking like that, then definitely you want to be with somebody. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Yeah, any other questions? Okay, so then work on you those open book essays. I gave you the two questions, question one and question seven. You should write on. And we'll see you. We just have two more classes. We'll finish off next week, two days. Okay, thank you very much. Srila Prabhupada Ki Jai. Go back to Vrinda Ki Jai. Uh -huh.